What's up guys, I'm Grey. I'm currently a self-learning artist with some big art dreams. As some of you might know, I created a character concept sheet in the last video with the goal to be able to post weekly on Instagram. Well, psych! <laughs> My perfectionist self had me working on this for around two weeks. It was like another big bruh moment in my two plus years of learning digital art. I wonder if anyone can relate to being a, such a slow artist like me. It always seems like I underestimate the time I need to spend on a certain project. With all my plans, I wish I could go a little faster so I probably will have to work on that for the rest of my life or the next couple months. Okay guys, <laughs> I just came back from calculating all the recorded footage of the hours I worked on this piece and I basically recorded from the start to the finish. I'm guessing there's only one or two hours of unrecorded times where I'm drawing and it turns out that I spent <laughs> 42 hours and 13 minutes on this piece. And that's crazy because I thought that I only spent 20 plus hours, <laughs> which is funny because that character concept sheet I did, I thought I did 20 plus hours, but it only turns out I did like 14 or something, but this time I did double the amount I thought I worked. I don't know, that's just funny and crazy to me. <laughs> I didn't realize that time would go so fast and I didn't know that I could work on something this long. I don't know if the results kind of reflect how much I spent on it, but I just want to give myself a pat on the back for working hard even though I wished I did it in like a week instead of two weeks. Anyway, yeah, that's just a really big surprise. I'm just like in shock. So as you can maybe tell, I have quite a bit of affection towards this piece for multiple reasons. And now that I know I spent that long on it, <laughs> I've become more accepting of it. <laughs> I think this is actually the first illustration that I attached a title to. This piece is somewhat close to my heart in that there is a lot of meaning behind it and in a way it's like multiple layers of meaning that I hope the viewers can appreciate it at different levels. Like I hope this piece can meet them where they are and speak to them in the situation that they are in and honestly that's kind of a bit lofty for my goals. I just want to first convey that my goal for this piece was to ultimately give a feeling of hope in the midst of not knowing where you are or where you're going and it can mean many things but the ultimate meaning behind this is staying strong, knowing what your goal is in life and not giving in to compromise that will keep you from where you actually really want to go. And so I called this piece Purpose. I didn't really mean to go on a full tangent trying to explain <laughs> the purpose of this piece right off the bat, but it just felt right to say it. So as I've started taking art seriously since 2022, there has been a number of failures and a number of successes. I just want to update you guys where I am currently as of now in my art journey, where I'm at with fundamentals and just sharing my ideas and thoughts about portfolio building and career searching. I also want to share my art process for this illustration, so those are the two major things I want to share with you guys in this video. Let me see, how should I start? Well, for most of my art journey right now, it might have sounded like I was dedicating my whole day ever since 2022 to art. Maybe to some it might think like that, but during 
this time period of two years since then, there has been quite some lack of certainty on whether I should keep pursuing art as seriously as I was. I was also trying to work out my academics in college. Working, essentially there were other things that made me feel like I was putting my feet on two boats and I couldn't really go anywhere or execute things really well or fast because I was juggling different things that led to different paths. So in that regard, I didn't make as much progress as I would have wished in terms of art. I would hear professional artists say that you just need like two to three years to work on your fundamentals and develop a portfolio and get yourself ready for a career, but in these past two years, until now, now when I look at these two years, I still don't think I'm ready <laughs> to have an actual art career in an industry. And honestly, I don't particularly want to make a professional art career in a certain industry like the game industry, the film industry, if you kind of get what I mean. What I worked on the most was doing studies, experimenting with styles, doing lots of anatomy studies, and that took a big chunk of my art journey. For instance, my anatomy right now is good enough for my goals and purposes. It could use more stylization, in my opinion, that would help me stand out if I do make a portfolio surrounding characters and such. As for color, light, design, perspective, <laughs> composition, I think those fundamentals are less developed. Not saying that where I am is completely bottom tier, <laughs> but the problem is that I don't have enough work, like final work, finalized pieces to create an, ent an entire portfolio to show to a certain area of art, if you know what I mean. I don't have a curated work of illustrations to apply for an illustration job or a number of props or environment art to apply for a concept art job and such. So right now I'm at this place where I dabbled in concept art, trying to feel what concept art is like by doing that character concept sheet. I dabbled in illustration. I did a little bit of backgrounds. I tried a little bit of doing my own webtoon. So I kind of dabbled a lot in different areas, but I'm still trying to develop a strong list of finalized work that is specialized in a certain area. So that's where I am right now. <laughs> I hope that I didn't beat around the bush too much to explain where I am, but yeah. From now on, I will probably be more focused. Actually, I don't even know if I will start to narrow down the kind of pieces I'll be making, whether it be props only, or illustrations only, or concept art only for games or film. I don't even know if I will start to do that because I do have other life responsibilities. So right now, I think I will keep art as a major hobby and just slowly take my time to get better and better to the point that it becomes something more than that, but albeit the process, my process will probably continue to be slow. <laughs> I still want to do my best. And ultimately, in the future, I really would love to see a career where I can support myself with art products that I personally have made and just have multiple streams of income that are not heavily reliant on doing industry work like as for a major franchise 
or an AAA game, selling products like comics, illustrated books, and such. I hope those will be my major sources of income in the future. You know, because personally, I love the idea of working for myself or working with a small team. If you couldn't tell already, I'm an introvert. I love staying at home, so having a job that lets me stay in one place, in my room, with the curtains closed, in my comfy clothes, just working on my stuff. That's like the ideal life scenario for me. And it's funny because I've developed a certain hatred for this sign, and it's kind of unhealthy and I don't really recommend it, but it's gone to a point where I would open up the currents and then I feel like Dracula. I feel like as artists, it seems that our childhood influences really impact our art career and our art goals. For example, if you loved a certain TV show, a certain comic series, if you loved anime, you watched it while you're young, I'm guessing that those played a big influence on how you view art and where your passion in art is. But I'm just guessing and kind of speaking for myself <laughs> because ever since I was young, I was watching anime. At one point, I was very addicted to anime. Eventually, I started to read webtoons. So a lot of Eastern art heavily impacts the art I do today. And I feel like one of the goals I want to attain is bringing Eastern art to the Western audience in a fresh and inspiring way. I think there are really cool elements in Eastern art that I want to share with the Western audience, but I want to incorporate a more unique and personal style to it so that people can appreciate something that hasn't really been created before. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to put together my thoughts in a coherent manner, but sometimes words don't feel as enough compared to pictures. So I hope if I do a comic series, my art will speak f for me for itself. Anyways, um, man, I, I wish I could do a video <laughs> where I could kind of nerd out a little bit on my favorite pieces of illustrated stories, particularly webtoons, the ones that stand out to me and highly influence or inspire me because there is a number of them and seeing those particular webtoon artists attain such a highly stylistic and aesthetic feeling to their artwork and their stories man it just it just gets me fired up to do something like that on my own like, bro, if you haven't read Legend of the Northern Blade, Gosu, Unholy Blood, bro, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> nah, I'm not, nah, you're good. I know there are some people that kind of look down on webtoon art because they use more 3D assets. Some artists maybe don't have time enough to do line work over and make it more cohesive with the rest of their art style. But I hope that people can recognize that there are particular pieces of work by exceptional artists, whether it be in manga, anime, or webtoons. There's just works out there that is so exceptional just by looking at their art. But anyways, that's basically where I am right now. Let me go on and move towards... A bit of my art process for this illustration on screen. So taking into account my experience on making that character concept sheet for Rain, which is my somewhat new OC, I understood that planning my process, planning the colors, planning the values, the shapes are very important at the beginning and before all of that, I also had a particular 
vision that I that I had for this piece. And that is basically what I mentioned at the beginning of this video, where I want to give my audience hope, and it can mean multiple things to different people. And whether or not my final results was able to accomplish that, I don't think it really did. But I hope you guys feel at least a little bit of what I'm going for. So first, I did a really rough, small thumbnail sketch of the shape language and the overall um, composition of this piece. I have the entire framed ink series from Marcos Mateo Mestre and this guy is like an OG when it comes, I think, to composition, especially for storytelling. And where am I going with this? <laughs> but anyways, I learned some interesting compositional arrangements that you can put to help you emphasize the feeling you want to get across to your audience. So to keep it simple and easy on the eyes, I used the rule of thirds. The intersections are just really comfortable places to put your focal point. For this illustration, I wanted to make the viewers feel relaxed when looking at this piece and not too full of tension, so I used the rule of thirds. In addition to that, I really wanted to have like a dominant round shape. So when you look at this illustration, maybe you can tell that there's like a really large curved arc that's like a circle shaping the group of leaves. And opposed to that, there are triangles that are hidden, kind of hidden in the main character, which is Rain, in her pose. Essentially, the leaves are pretty round, and the secondary forms of the leaves are also round. Um, I guess. <laughs> but uh, to say it simply, I wanted a circular shape to be the dominant shape in this piece and that's just to create this sense of flow that feels smooth because when you look at the circle it doesn't have any sharp edges it just makes you feel it will flow better uh, I don't know if you guys know what I mean but <laughs> like when I explain this to my younger sister if I reference feelings with shapes she doesn't understand what I mean <laughs> So circles are the dominant shape in this, and to contrast that, I use the main character's pose is kind of purposely made into triangle shapes to kind of insinuate that she's not the same as her environment and is breaking through that environment. The difference in shapes, by using triangles with circles, it just creates a sense of contrast that brings your attention to her, to the main character. So yeah, that's what I did for the rough thumbnail sketch. Next, I did a rough take on the values. I think I only did one or two <laughs> value comps. Um, in the future, I probably want to do more so that I will have even better ideas and better options. And thirdly, I only did two different color thumbnails. Um, I'm not sure if I will show it in this video because, I don't know, it's pretty messy. <laughs> but essentially, I wanted the colors to make it feel like she's not part of her environment. And then her pose and the shapes that form her pose all point to the fact that she is going somewhere else. You know, one reason why I took about 42 hours on this piece was because of messing up. And what I mean by messing up is that I didn't plan enough, or I skipped a step or skipped too many steps. So somewhat recently, I've been going through Tim McBurney's art course that he has. I talked about McBurney in my previous video, but basically he's a comic artist, concept artist, illustrator, 
and he has a large course where he talks about color and basically guides you through your art journey by giving you different tips and lessons. So one big tip that I learned from him was that we struggle with making our pieces look polished and professional because we are not taking care of the secondary forms. And that was what I was majorly missing, at least in the first half of my process during making this illustration. And what I mean is, if you guys don't know secondary form, take my explanation with a grain of salt, but imagine if I drew a tree, you know that it's kind of easy to draw the tree trunk, but what would you do with all the leaves? How do you go from drawing the entire silhouette of the tree's round shape on top to those small minuscule leaves? What do you do? Well, you can solve that by putting in secondary forms. That is grouping the leaves into, into secondary shapes and defining the volume of each secondary shape so that there's clarity and then going from that to detailing the leaves if you want to go that far and that was what i was kind of missing like what i said in the tree example i went from drawing the big silhouette of where i want the leaves to go but then i went straight into drawing each detailed leaf i didn't really take care of the secondary forms first so that was a major struggle and I almost want to say that it was like I was bringing blood, sweat, and tears into <laughs> my process. At first, I was using a harder pen brush to figure out the line art. But then when I drew the leaves, I was very unsatisfied with the look. So I completely erased all those leaves that I drew, erased all of them painfully. <laughs> And then replace them with a different brush, which is the default pencil brush in Clip Studio Paint. And that just helped give me a more, a more softer effect for the leaves. Let's see, so I did that. Um, what else did I do? Um, and oh my goodness, I just thought of something, which is the layers. <laughs> when you're doing a piece which focuses more on keeping the line art instead of making it painterly, I feel like there is more of a tendency to have more layers. Actually, scratch that. I, I can't say for every artist, but that's what happened to me. By the end of this illustration, after I finished the line art, the sketch, the base colors, the shadows, the rendering, the post-rendering effects, Oh my goodness, I don't even know, I just had a mountain of layers looking at me at the end. There's like probably half of them that I don't even need anymore in the piece, but I'm just keeping it because the benefit of layers is that you can draw something on a layer and then you could turn it on and off and decide later whether you want to keep a particular element or eliminate that element. So. Uh, but it's just kind of funny to see <laughs> that I've become this kind of artist where I use so many layers for different elements or areas of this illustration. I'm pretty sure I reached like 50 layers. Maybe one day I can show you guys the mess I made. <laughs> so finally, what are my major takeaways from this illustration? Well, I definitely need to explore different colors more. As you can see, <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm so attached to like this grayish blue color. Actually, I know why. <laughs> My username is has gray in it, whether it be gray knight or just gray. It's funny because I chose that username not thinking that I would use that color so much. <laughs> Maybe because I made my username this color, that might have also contributed to my attachment towards the color gray. <laughs> but 
You know, to me, Grey also tells a certain story, and for this illustration, Grey helped provide a decent contrast towards the more saturated and light-hearted blues I had on the main subject, the main character. I think this color, it, it's easy to pair saturated colors with it because it just makes those saturated colors pop out more in an easy way, but I'm a little worried that it would become too much of a crutch, so hopefully I want to explore colors such as green, pink, purple in the future and not make my pieces too dull, at least not always. After doing this illustration, I was able to learn more about myself. I know particular art jobs are not as ideal for slower artists like me, so it helps me understand that I probably won't be taking those particular jobs in the future. And because of that constraint, I'm able to narrow down my goals. So maybe just like that, you can take into your own art process and think about your own way of doing art, whether it be super fast or super slow, whether it be drawing precise lines or drawing multiple expressive and scribbly lines. Those attributes can help explain to you what kind of art career is most ideal for you, um, such as doing illustrations. People might give you a month or maybe two weeks to finish the illustration as opposed to storyboarding and such. And by doing this illustration, I realized that my patience level right now is about two weeks. <laughs> Looking back in the, at this piece, I feel like I can do even more, but my patience level and sense of urgency just made me feel like I can only give this two weeks and not more than that. And looking at that, I know that it might be harder for me to take on certain jobs such as doing super big illustrations for certain clients. Anyways. But I also love details a lot. I hope that you guys can see that in this piece. A lot of artists will probably relate to this, but <laughs> after I posted this artwork on Instagram, I at the beginning I was like I was avoiding it like the plague and I feel like if I looked at it now I was going to throw up or something. I still feel a little bit of that aversion now because I know there's so much I wish this piece could be, but I think my current skills right now couldn't live up to that and the time constraints couldn't live up to my expectations. But that's okay because I still am relatively happy about this piece and I'm glad that I was able to get a piece of artwork that was meaningful to me and share it with people. I have lots planned. I plan to still keep trying to check off my art bucket list. I hope to share with you guys more of my art journey. Thank you guys for watching. I wish everyone a good day and happy drawing everyone. Bye!